and go. Well, hello everyone. Super nice to uh, be on this. Very thankful, very honored, um, but also very nervous. So um, I am Jennifer Zant um, from Waxahachie, Texas, and I am a 200K. And I have been on this journey for 78 months now. Um, it seems like a long, long time, but yet it seems like yesterday. And so I want to share with you just briefly about who I am and where I came from. Um, when I started this business, it was January 2004. 14, and I'll tell you this, I didn't have a growth mindset. Um, and I didn't start out this business with a growth mindset. I definitely was a fixed mindset. So I just want you guys to go into the chats and tell me when you started this business, whether it was yesterday or whether it was four years ago, were you a fixed mindset or were you a growth mindset? Because I have actually learned so much in 78 months. Um, I have transformed from that fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And so that's kind of what I'm going to talk to you guys about today because um, mine's been a heck of a journey. I didn't come into this business uh, with a network. I didn't come into this business from another business. I had kind of dabbled in another direct sales company before, but never done anything successful, right? Um, I came in here not listening to what I'm a direct uh, frontline to Maria Dillard. Wasn't listening to what Maria was telling me to do. Um, I'm an only child, so I like to do things kind of my way. There's that fixed mindset, right? Um, and I just came in here really slow. I did hit 4K my first month though. So I think that was, you know, a lot of success. So who hit 4K in their first 30 days? Raise your hand. That's exciting. That's something to celebrate. Um, but here's the deal. I didn't go much further than that. And the reason for that was I wasn't doing anything. I still was in that fixed mindset. I didn't believe in vision boards. I didn't believe in uh, three-way calls. I didn't believe in doing the do to get the get, right? I just honestly thought it was naturally going to happen. Hey, I'm selling something and hey, they're going to buy it from me is really what my mind was telling me. Also, my mind was telling me that people were judging me. People were thinking ugly things of me. People were calling me that sales girl. Well, those things got into my head and allowed my fixed mindset to stall me and to not continue on. Um, long story short, Five months into the business, May 2014, I made a complete transformation. I made a change and it took a phone call to let my light bulb moment go off. That is exactly the month that I went from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. That's when things started actually happening and I started listening to what Mari was telling me. I started implementing the things that I needed to do and that's when our business started to grow. And guys, I think that's our goal here. I mean, raise your hand, is your goal to grow? Your goal to help other people live the life they deserve? Your goal is to be successful here, right? Well, that's always been my goal but my mindset was in my way and not allowing me to do that because that little voice in your head, it's powerful. Us women, we've listened to that little girl since we were probably three years old. She's told us ugly things about ourselves. She's told us not to do this or to do that, right? Well, that little voice is not the voice of reason. That's the voice you shouldn't listen to and you should do it anyways and step out of your comfort zone and that's when beautiful things happen. You hear that all the time. Step out of your comfort zone, step out of your comfort zone. Well, I'll tell you this, I shared my story for the very first time in August 2014 at a live local. Sharing my Thrive story was terrifying to me. I mean, it was just, I was petrified. But doing that, allowed me to grow. That's what that growth mindset is. And so taking it from your head to your heart is truly what you need to do to succeed in this business. There's some people that come into this business that are 100% coachable. There's people that come into this business that come in with a network and they blow it up. There's people that are just playing out rock stars and they just know what they're doing and they blow it up, right? I was not one of those people. And so if you're not one of those people, you're the one I'm speaking to today. And if you've got someone on your team that's not one of those people, send them this recording because they're going to need to hear it. Taking it from your head to your heart is truly one of the most powerful tools that you can have in this business. Because if you're in your own way, 
you're blocking your blessings and you're going to go nowhere with this business because you're already telling yourself lies. And so a growth mindset would be someone who pushes through things, who does things anyways, who embraces challenge, who, um, wants to better themselves and wants to improve and is always learning, um, inspired by others. I listen to Susan Kaufman's uh, Monday morning motivation every single Monday. We're not on the same team. We're sideline sisters. Raise your hand if you love that Monday motivation call. It's incredible. Yeah, I love it. Well, here's the deal. She inspires me. We're sideline sisters, but I'm geared that way. I'm a growth mindset now. I want to be inspired. A fixed mindset, guys, is going to block all of those blessings for you. They're going to feel threatened by other success. They're not going to listen to Susan's call because Susan's successful. They can't be successful. Good for her, right? Um, they give excuses. Guys, I've given plenty of excuses. Um, I used to give excuses to go to locals. I used to give excuses to get on phone calls. I used to give excuses just for my own self of not sharing the product. When you stop giving excuses and you get out of your own way, beautiful things happen. What we have here is a product that helps other people and we want other people to feel good. And so if you're looking at this as sharing it with other people and helping others, you're going to transition into that growth mindset versus that fixed mindset. Um, Six years ago, when I started this business, I had never, okay, this is honest, vulnerability right here, right? I had never read a book cover to cover. And when Maria told me that reading would inspire me, reading would help me learn, reading would help me grow, and that's what I needed to do. Once I became into that growth mindset, I was willing to listen and I was willing to learn. And if that's what it would take to help me better myself, then that's what I was going to do. Um, I should have already looked at how many books I've read over the last six years, but it's a lot. Um, this year, my New Year's resolution was to read two books every month, and I'm on point today of doing that. So I'm going to share with you guys about feeding your brain and why it's important, because you got to stay on track. You have to stay in the zone. You have to be good and positive, right? And with what's going on in the world, the media can derail you like no tomorrow. Um, a Facebook post can derail you like no tomorrow. I mean, like there's so many things out there that can keep you off of that track. But to stay focused, feeding my brain is truly what feeds me and fuels my soul, right? So I want to talk about Eat That Frog from Brian Tracy. If you haven't read it, you definitely need to. If you have, drop us some comments about what you love. But basically, it's a book about stop procrastinating. Get that list of things that you need to do, and the number one thing needs to be the thing you don't want to do first, okay? So my first thing in the morning that I don't want to do is exercise, and guess what I do? I get up at 5 a.m. every morning, and I go running, but that's the least thing that I want to do on my list, but it's the first thing that I do. You can't procrastinate, guys. You've got to just send that message. You have to get out of your own way and reach out to people and help them live the life they deserve which is what we have here with this product, right? Um, so that's Eat That Frog with Brian Tracy. The next one is Own Your Everyday by Jordan Dooley. Guys, that book was powerful. It talks about proving yourself and showing up for what you were made to do, okay? That's what we have here with this business is proving ourselves and showing up every single day. Consistency. We hear that word all the time. That's the difference in my business the first five months versus the last, uh, oh gosh, I don't even, well, 78 months total, right? That's the difference is that consistency. I show up every single day, even on the days I don't want to. But these books are fueling me to keep me on that track and keep me in the zone. Um, okay, so Gary Bishop. Have you guys read his book? He was going to be at Thrive of Palooza this year. And so his book, un -F Yourself, um, was not appealing to me. I don't like that word, just saying. It took me until last month, knowing that he was going to be at convention, knowing that we were going to see him speak, I felt the need to read that book. Guys, holy wowzers. That book talks about stop shrinking yourself. Stop telling yourself all of those negative things that are not true 
and getting out and taking the opportunity of a lifetime and making it happen. It's almost like he wrote the book for me to read or all of us to read, which is why I think Jason and Paul invited him to be at convention. And I just hope and pray that he's going to be there next year because that book was incredible. And yes, I will put all of these in our event page so that you guys can have them. The Miracle Morning. Guys, how many of you start your morning off with a routine? You do the same thing every single day. This is super important. When I read this book, it really was brought to life to me that you have to have the same routine every single morning. So I get up, I take my capsules. That's the first thing that I have done. I mean, and that's the one thing I've done consistently for the last 78 months. No ifs, ands, or buts. Those two capsules have a morning dose of motivation and I need it every single day. I get up, I brush my teeth, I get my workout clothes on and I go straight to work out. I also make my bed. And then I come home and I clean the kitchen to make sure everything is legit. And then I get to work on my business. What is your routine? What do you do every single morning consistently? While I'm running or while I'm to and from, you know, the place that I run, I listen to my audio books. I listen to something positive. I get my mind in the zone. I stay focused on having a great, productive, amazing day. Positive things feed the soul, right? Okay, so I got three more and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Fear is not the boss of you. Guys, <laughs> the times that we're living in right now can be so fearful. We got to be able to choose faith over fear, right? Same thing with this business. If you're fearful to reach out to your friend, you're never going to make it. I mean, you're never going to get her thriving. But if you take faith and you go from your head to your heart, you're going to reach out to her knowing she needs this product, but most importantly, knowing she needs the product and it's going to, she's going to benefit from it. That's what that's all about. The indecisions paralyzed by fear is what fear is not the boss of you. That's by Jen Allwood. It's a new book. Man, she speaks my soul. Um, okay. Everything is figure outable is my last book that I want to recommend. Guys, <laughs> There's so much truth behind that. If you want to do anything, you can do it. I mean, like, for real, think about it. You can figure it out. You may have to go to YouTube because YouTube has got can teach you everything you need to know, right? But everything is figure outable. That book really spoke to me because it helps me form the mindset and the habits that I needed to figure anything out. So those are my top reads. Um, feeding your brain to me is important. I think that you truly, truly, truly need to feed some positivity in your life every single day. So if you want to listen to a positive podcast, do it. If you want to read an audible, do it. If you want to read a book, do it. If you want to listen to YouTube, do it. If you want to um, read the Bible, do it. You need some form of at least 10 to 30 minutes a day of positive, positive, positive. So whatever your choice is, I highly suggest to just do it. Um, but make sure you're feeding your brain so that you can stay on track. Because here's the deal, guys. You can't pour from an empty cup. Your, your cup has to be full first. And I heard this at um, Rachel Hollis Rise, that if you've got a vase, I mean, I got a little candle here, so I'll use it as just demonstration. But if you've got a vase and you're pouring water into it, right? Well, normally this person would tip over and keep pouring into other people's cup, right? That's not what you're supposed to do. This vase has to stand tall. This vase has to stand strong. This vase has to stand with confidence. As that water's pouring in, guess what happens when that water fills up? It overflows into everyone else. And that's what feeding your mind does. That's what fueling your soul does. And that keeps you in the space that you need to be in on an every single day basis. Okay, so now into using your time wisely. Guys, busy. B-U-S-Y. Everybody in this world is busy. Everybody. There's no excuse. Everybody's busy. You're a mom. You work. You got dogs. Um, I don't know. You got six jobs. Um, I don't know. You're a stay-at-home mom and you sit on the couch and eat bonbons. I mean, you're busy, right? Busy is a four-letter word. That's it. You can use it as an excuse or you can use it as determination and you can make things happen. You got to be able to make time. Maria Dillard tells us all the time, the time is going to pass anyways. Use it wisely. 
So you got to be able to fit things into your nooks and crannies. And so just a few things that I want to share with you tip wise that I would, I do um, that saves me time. And uh, some of you may already know this, some of you may not, but I save all the numbers in my phone. So for instance, the Lavelle corporate line, I've already got that number saved in my phone so that when Paul posts here in 10 or 15 minutes, cause you know, he always does, Hey, we got a call straight up 1:30, right? And you're like, what is that number? What is that number? Cause I don't remember numbers. So I have to have it saved in my phone. So I'm going to challenge every one of you to go save the Lavelle corporate line in your phone. So that if you're driving, um, I don't know, maybe you're running, whatever it is, you can clearly just hit call. Okay. Um, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Go ahead and save Susan's motivation, Monday morning motivation calls. Save that. Um, save Sheila Fasoni's Wednesday noon uh, Central Standard Time leadership calls. Whatever your team does on a regular, consistent basis, save those numbers in your phone. And make sure you um, identify them because Susan's is Susan Mo Morning Motivation and then hers is Susan Kaufman. So there has been times where I've actually called Susan at 7.15 in the morning instead of dialed into her corporate line. Um, but save those numbers in your phone to save you some time. The other time saver is, or maybe memory jogger, set yourself some alarms so that you remember that that call is going to happen. I have alarms set in my phone um, for basically everything, okay? So every Monday morning at 7.10, because I give myself five minutes, I remind myself that Susan's call is fixing to happen. So if I'm busy with the dog because the dog's been sick all night, or if I'm um, cleaning the pool because we had a rain shower and there's leaves in it, or if I oversleep or whatever it is, there's not an excuse. My alarm goes off. I've already got the number saved and I can actually, boom, dial it in, okay? So save all those numbers into your phone. The next little tip that I wanna add is, did you know, some of you probably have, go ahead and uh, say I already knew that or give me a high five or raise your hand if you already knew. When you save the number, I don't know if you guys can see that, if you put a comma, comma, in between, like Susan did in the comments up here, in between the number and the code that you enter, all you have to do, if you have an iPhone, I'm not sure about other phones, I guess I should clarify that. All you have to do is click on that and it dials the number and it enters the code for you. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse for you not to be on that call or tune in or plug in. Um, so that is my time saving, use your time wisely tips. Um, now, I would like to toss it off. I have a little special guest here with me. Um, my daughter, she is 19-year-old Madison Zant, who actually started her Thrive business um, a year ago in July. Come on over, Madison. <laughs> and I want her to, I, I felt like when we were asked to do this, I felt like her journey would resonate with a lot of you. And so I wanted her to briefly share just a little bit about what she's found out about this business. I mean, keep in mind, she has lived in this house for six years, watching me thrive, okay? <laughs> 19 years. Okay, okay. Watching me Well, I mean, years. like six years thrive. Yeah, so, no, I know anyways, you. this is Madison Zant, <laughs> and she's going to just bring you a breath of fresh air about her thriving story over the last year, just real quick. Hello, guys. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous right now. This is like my first Zoom to ever do. So when I was younger and Patty they used to tell me to pretend like everyone's in their underwear, so that's what I'm doing right now. So if you're actually in your underwear, turn the video off, but just wanted to let y'all know. <laughs> okay, so like my mom said, I'm Madison. I'm a 19-year-old college student, um, and I just wanted to share my journey with you and what worked for me and what didn't work for me. So um, last year in July, I actually clicked the promoter button. I had just turned 18 and I was so excited to join the business because I had watched my mom do it for six years. And I was like, I can do that. I want to do that. I was driven. Um, I just wanted to be just like my mom. And so when I first started, my mom was giving me all these tips and tricks and everything. And I believed her. I was like, I can do this. I did it. And I, I really did it first. I had goals. I wanted to be 4k by August. So I set that goal for myself. And I mean, I was rocking and rolling the first week I was posting, but where I went wrong is I was only posting about thrive on my Facebook page and on my Instagram. It was all thrive. It wasn't anything else but thrive. And for that week, I didn't see any success. I was like, why is no one reaching out to me? Why is no one coming 
running to me? Why does no one want to sign up? And I was confused as to what I was doing wrong. And um, in the end, I honestly gave up on myself and I let those voices get into my head and I thought I couldn't do it. And I let other people, I call them the stupid people, tell me that I couldn't do it, but I really could. I just gave up on myself. So fast forward a year later, this July, I started back in and I was ready. I hit the ground running. I was like, mom, I want to do this. I want to be 4k by August. I want to hit these goals. I want to be just like you because she is a boss babe and I love her so much. And I'm so glad she is my mother. But so I started, I took, I listened to everything she told me to do and guys, it is paying off. So basically what I started doing is I started living my life out loud. I started living my life through Facebook. I started posting, not just thrive. I started posting, I would post my thrive in the morning and let people know what I was doing. So they would be interested, but I started posting, I would go work out. I do camp gladiator. If any of y'all know what that is and I'm very passionate about it. So I would do that and I would post about it every single day. I'd post my Apple watch. I would post the food that I was cooking. I would just post things that people are interested about because people want to see those positive things in your life and they want to see you live your life through Facebook. And honestly, I wanted to be that positive person for those people because in this world today, there's so many unpositive things on Facebook. So that is truly what worked for me was living my life out loud through Facebook and guys just making connections with people. Like in Camp Gladiator, I was just talking to people and not even talking about Thrive, just talking about things that we had in common. And I have made so many connections by simply just living my life through Facebook. But I wanted to share this quote with you guys real quick. Um, it says, and I think this quote um, is perfect to my journey, but it says, I'm a greater believer in luck and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it, Thomas Jefferson. And I truly believe that is so true that luck doesn't come to you just like that. You have to work for it. And the more you work for it, the more luck you're going to have in anything in life. So I just wanted to share those little simple tricks with you guys and get y'all motivated. But thank you for letting me be on the Zoom. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> so little tip, we both talk really loud when we get excited so <laughs> if you had to turn your volume down it's just because we get really excited <laughs> okay so isn't she just precious she's used to being on the stage but for some reason she had little butterflies and we all get butterflies right I mean sometimes this is nerve-wracking I mean I called Susan right before this and I said girl I am so nervous um just stepping out of your comfort zone is a beautiful thing. Living your life out loud, feeding your soul is truly what's going to keep you on track, right? Um, but the last few days, if I could bring you guys a tip or a trick or something that you could utilize today to get off of this Zoom and just to take action with, right? Because we all have dreams, we all have goals, but none of those two are going to work if you don't take action, right? And so the last few days, I would say since last Thursday, I have kind of been on a mission about this compliance credit, guys. Who all has got that email? Who all claimed your $25 in credit? And who all went and placed an order? Okay. Well, what I was finding was our teams didn't know about it. You know, the company sent an email out. Um, I, I think I even got a text. I can't even remember how I was notified. Um, but we, we got the information, right? Don't assume that everyone in your network in your downline got that information because they didn't. And I promise you that that's what I was finding. So if you need to go make a post in your team chat, go do it. If you're a 200 K go make a post in your team page and just simply ask if they know about it. I have found so many people who had no idea about this thrive credit and talk about getting people coming back. To thriving because of those credits it has truly been a blessing and truly been incredible just kind of digging into that um, report I went into thanks to Susan my sponsors report and I just started scrolling and I, that gives you the phone numbers and that gives you the email so you have no excuse not to have that connection and I just started sending messages to people asking if they had grabbed their compliance credits and some of them would come back and say I have no idea what you're talking about some of them would come back and say, girl, I already spent that, you know? So whatever the message was, I would engage further. And so those that said, I have no idea what you're talking about, I sent them a little picture that showed them exactly where to find it in the cloud office. And I said, girlfriend, you're clearly gonna get free money for answering 10 questions. Go grab them now. And I would dare say 95% of everyone that I've reached out to, and I should have counted all the messages, but that would have taken way too long. Um, but 
it has sparked a lot of thrivers coming back um, and or just people getting, you know, plus line products that they haven't experienced before. And so those credits are free money that the company's given. I don't know of any other company that gives that out. And I feel like we're truly blessed here. We all know that we are. But I have spent a lot of time digging into that and reaching out to people and sharing that with them. I had one lady um, basically say, I have no idea what you're talking about. And that turned into a $400 order guys, because she spent her $25 in credit. She's ready to get back. She ordered one, two, three, she ordered the fit. And so I think that where I want to end with this is it's about communication, whether you're reaching out to your downline or you're reaching out to a friend. You have to be a communicator. You have to be that conversation starter. You have to be the person that initiates those conversations because if you're not having conversations on a daily basis, you're not getting a reason for people to thrive. When you're listening to people and you're conversating, they're going to complain. They're going to tell you why they need this product. And all you have to do is listen. So my best advice ending this Zoom is you got to start these conversations with your friends and your family and your Facebook uh, wall and your Instagram people. Because if you're not starting these conversations, you're not leading to a solution. And we all know that our one, two, three definitely is a solution to these people's problems. But we've got to listen to them. Why do they need this? Why do they need to thrive? And so dig into your compliance. Um, or your team and get those compliance credits, make sure everyone knows about them, but also get really good at communicating with people. And that's kind of what Madison was talking about. You know, she obviously, like all of us, have been stuck in the house. She got brought back from college. Um, and so what her new normal was, was transitioned back to where she used to be, right? And so she's now having to put herself into new places to meet new people, to start new conversations. And that's where the needle starts moving. You know, Jason Camper talks about that snowball effect, right? You have a little ball and you just roll it. And then eventually you keep rolling it. And what does it do? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's the thing, consistency. The more you roll your snowball, hence the more you start those conversations, the bigger your snowball is gonna get the more thrivers you're going to get. And so you've got to, you got to stay positive, number one. So don't air your dirty laundry on Facebook. You have to stay in the zone and you have to stay consistent. And so some of you guys are here to work this part-time, okay? You're in this part-time. Some of you guys are here to work this full-time, okay? The work you put in is truly the work you're going to get paid on, right? But that word sometimes doesn't come into this business at all. You can't be on one week and off the next. It's a consistency. That snowball is going to melt if you're not consistent. That snowball is, um, you know, going to go away. But if you keep rolling it and you're consistent, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you've got to be able to believe in yourself before anyone else is ever going to believe in you. And so that's why you've got to stick with those books, that positive stuff that you're going to feed your brain every single day. And with that being said, I just want to end it with my favorite quote because I can't do a Zoom or a call without saying it because I just love it. Um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right. So you can either talk yourself into something or you can talk yourself out of it. But either way, you're right. So remember that. So today, when you get off this Zoom, you can be inspired, you can be motivated, you can go get those books. But if you don't take action, nothing's gonna happen. Things in motion, stay in motion. Things at rest, stay at rest. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If this resonated with you and or you have a team member, I mean, Brooke yesterday was incredible with her you know, customer accounts. Um, Send these recordings out. There's a lot of people that don't plug into this. Number one, they work. Number two, um, they're busy. Number three, whatever. It's your job to send it to them and say, hey, this reminded me so much of you. Okay? Um, do your due diligence. Reach out, plug in, stay consistent, but most importantly, believe in yourself. And so, Susan, with that, I'll toss it back to you. 
I think we're good. Good job today, Zant. Hopefully all of you got a lot of great messages and um, information from that. She said one quote, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I was trying to make you a little pit collage with your picture and the quote that you said. But as I was writing it out, like I said, busy is a four letter word. It's either an excuse or determination. Is that what you said? It won't let me unmute you. Hold on, hold on. Say it again. Will it let you unmute? It's not letting you. Okay. Will you type it in the chat real quick? She'll type it in the chat real quick. I thought it was very profound because I have a lot of people. I personally love busy people because I think busy people get things done. So I'm going to let her type that in the chat real quick. We'll stop. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.